<laughs> so you got some sun. Uh, yeah, I was on vacation last week. Uh, um, uh, to begin with, I was very, very pleased with the uh, defense in the first half. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast came into the game shooting 42% from three and uh, was 15th in the country in that category. We were like 290th in defending the three and were giving up 42%. So our point of emphasis in the two days leading up to the game was we have to defend the three much better. And the end result, we went smaller because Eric uh, Swope got in foul trouble in the first half. We went smaller and were able to keep their offense in front of us. We, we, we switched a lot of things and uh, helped each other very well and got a lot of stops, which led to a lot of fast break opportunities for us and open court opportunities, which we were able to convert at a fairly high rate. I think 42 points is the most we've scored in a half this season, at least in the first half. Um, however, we were not able to sustain that defensive effort, and so we didn't get any fast breaks really in the second half. Uh, and they were able to chip away at the lead, and they cut it from 18 down to 9 very, very quickly. Uh, they were able then to sit in that zone the whole time. And as you can see, we really we don't have like a low post presence. We can't just throw the ball inside right now. Uh, <coughs> we, we would love to have, you know, Kenny and, and Raphael be able to really score with their back to the basket. Uh, but um, when the defense is a zone that collapses on them, tries to, you know, keep the ball out of the paint, and it, it becomes more difficult for them to score. Did you worry about this game maybe being a trap game because of the fact that you've got games like Mississippi and Drew coming up? Well, from a coaching standpoint, we try to prepare the team for every game. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no one game that's more important than another. Now, maybe for the fans, maybe for the media, you look at their records and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, you don't play well, you're going to lose because there's a lot of very good teams. You, you see the... Um, uh, games that mid-major teams have beaten high-major teams on a regular basis. You know, Presbyterian beats Cincinnati. Um, um, Cleveland State beats Vanderbilt. And Kent State beats West Virginia. And so on and so forth. I, I told the players, there's 14 games in the first, like, 10 days of the season that maybe you would call them trap games, but from my experience, there's very little difference between those teams. When it comes to understanding that everybody has their unique style, so for example in this game, their three-point shooting ability and our inability to stop the three in our first three games, now all of a sudden becomes who can execute better? Will our defense be able to make the adjustment and defend the three better? Or will their offense continue to make it a 42% rate? Because if they did, the score would have been much different. Mm -hmm. And and the adjustments a coach makes in those circumstances is based on his personnel and the opponent you're playing. Mm -hmm. So what you think is, well, they're high major and this is mid-major or low major. Well, I've been at this a long time. I know there's a lot of teams, not in the BCS, mm -hmm. that really know how to play. Mm -hmm. And I thought those kids did a great job tonight from Florida Gulf Coast. Yeah, what were your impressions of them tonight, yeah. Well, they're an excellent three-point shooting team that were, that wasn't able to get it going from three in the first half. And what you often see is if a team shoots the ball very well early in the game, it becomes contagious. And, and then now everybody's thinking they can make the three. By us taking away the three in the first half, we end up holding them to three for 15 for the game, only 20%. That's by far our best performance overall. So I, I think for them, they rely very heavily on it. I think they, their guard play, I thought Comer was very, very good. Um, Sherwood Brown, outstanding shooter. I mean, he has 19 points on 12 shots, and he makes three threes. And those, those are guys that if they can do that consistently, they stretch the opponent's defense out. Mm -hmm. And then that gives a guy like Comer a chance to get inside the defense and score because he's very good at making layups. Did they do anything different in the second half? No. What, what happens is, uh, 
and, and you see this a lot. Uh, we expended so much energy on defense, more than we have in any game previous, that by halftime, it's not that we're tired physically, we're, we haven't focused that hard for an extended period of time. We think that whatever we did is just going to continue. It's kind of the natural thought, oh, we, we, we've got these guys. Well, it really has nothing to do with that. The first half is over and, and now adjustments have to be made. And they were able to make a few adjustments and we were not able to capitalize. You were, you were talking about inside presence. Just want to check with you on Reggie. Is he still projected to either late December or January? Um, what they're looking at right now is he visited with the doctor and was given an update. Uh, the best person to ask on his progress and where he is is our, our trainer, Wes Brown, mm -hmm. and uh, he'll be updating me. I read you visited the doctor yesterday and then again today. Jim, thoughts on 4-0, and uh, then you go on the road, Ole Miss and uh, Purdue step up, uh, play two power conference teams on the road, but you pleased with the 4-0? I like 4-0 better than 3-1 or 2-2, but I, I do think um, we've we've made progress in certain areas, like if you look at our turnovers, we only had seven tonight, um, we've had 10, 8, and 7 in our last three outings. Now, the difference is the other teams were in a zone and not pressuring. So it's, it's not like that's an indication that we're all of a sudden great against pressure teams. But we have been smarter with the basketball, much more selective in our passing. And we've gotten into uh, a good rhythm of, of not trying too many difficult passes. And we had 12 assists only seven turnovers or assist to turnover ratio is better. It would have been great if we had 18 assists and made five or six more shots. If you saw, like, Eric Swope was right at the rim and missed a layup. You know, Malcolm missed a wide open three, Duran missed a wide open three, Shane Larkin missed a wide open three, and they're very, very capable of making those. If they make those three and all of a sudden now we're 10 for 27, that's a much more productive night. We have three to five more assists, and, and we win by 20. Can you talk about Shane Larkin? You know, you, you did recruit, you recruited him to George Mason, so you obviously saw something you liked in him. What, what does he bring to the table, and why did you like him as a, as a high school player? Um, I saw Shane as a 10th grader for the first time. Absolutely loved his court presence. He's a point guard, he's a shooter, he has skill, but Probably the two greatest qualities he has is he got uncanny speed and he's got a high basketball IQ. He really understands what we're doing and how we're trying to do it. So tonight he got even a few more minutes, uh, 28 minutes, compared to I think the first game he probably played 13, the next game 18, tonight 28. And uh, we're, we're not a big team, so we play in a lot of guards, so it's, he's not the only one, you know. Uh, Durant played 35, Malcolm played 32, Shane played 28, and Trey McKinney Jones played 22, and we also have Ryan Brown, who's been sick, so I didn't use him in the rotation, but he'll probably be back in the rotation very shortly. So his speed, I mean, we saw his speed some today. He's really fast. <laughs> he is very fast. It's a four second dash, right? From one of the other. Yeah, one of the things, and it's one of the reasons it works is he gets a running start. So that the clock doesn't start until it hits his hand. He's already in high gear. Was that the biggest play of the game, Jim? That was huge because they, your your guys going up on a on a lift and they're going to the locker room with their heads down. Well, um, I would say that was a very important play to end the half. Um, but there were so many important plays in the second half when we were struggling. You know, we didn't we didn't score for the first like, six minutes. I think it was two, seven, seven minutes. I think it was two seven. points in ten and a half minutes. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's not that good. <laughs> when you when you think you have forty two in the first half, you you're looking at a seventy or eighty point night. We didn't do it. We scored eighteen points in the second half. Yeah. Normally that's what our backward scores. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Coach.